Now, from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports. Hey everyone, you can imagine most high school football players spent the day recovering, refocusing, or recounting their Friday night games. But for Jefferson City, the wait to kick off 2011 was just a little bit longer. Jays traveled to McClure, McClure North this afternoon to kick off their season. And early on, get used to seeing this. Devin Moore breaks off what's going to turn out to be a long touchdown run. He was on the cover of our pigskin preview, living up to the hype. Later, Gerard, Jared Johnson says to McClure North's quarterback, how about no? Takes him out right there. Big time hit. And later, Thomas LePage is going to throw the pass to Elijah Sherwood for a nice little gain. Now, this is funny here. Coming full circle. Johnson's going to get in from a couple yards out, doing it on both sides of the ball. Jeff City goes on to win 39-7. to It's early. I'll give you that. But going into today's game against Tulane, the Mizzou volleyball team still hadn't lost a set this season. Let's see if that streak continued. Mizzou's Brittany Brimage, the senior on hand for her final season. And Brimage had a big game. Kill right there, puts the Tigers up 7-3 in game one. Wayne Krecklow back for another season of Missouri volleyball. And Mizzou's Lisa Henning with a kill of her own. The Tigers went on to win game one, 25-19. They're having fun. Game two action. Brimage, once again, first with a block, then with the kill. There it is. Tigers go on to win game two, 25-21. They win in three games. They'll take on North Dakota State later tonight. Roll into some more volleyball. Columbia College in action for the first time since losing in the NAIA Finals a year ago. First set, Columbia's Vesna Trivanovich with the spike. Columbia College wins the first set, 25-20. Second set, Ola Shockey with another spike. And they win that set, 25-22. Finally, third set, Columbia's College, Nicole Murphy with the spike. And they go ahead and take that one, 27-25. They win it overall. About a month ago, the current four-game set between the Cardinals and Pirates looked like it might help and settle the NL Central. Now, not so much. Heading into this afternoon's game, the Pirates checked in 17 games back of the Brewers in that division, while the Cards came in at nine and a half back. Chris Carpenter coming off an eight-inning outing against the Dodgers. This one would be a little shorter. Josh Harrison, base hit. He's going to go ahead and drive in Garrett Jones. one nothing Pirates. Pirates playing like it's July. Fourth inning. Jones returns the favor and gets an RBI double of his own. Scoring runs, driving in runs. 2-0 pit. Still the fourth, Harrison. Well, he's going to drive in Neil Walker and Jones again. And this inning was ugly, but believe me, it got worse. Next inning, fifth inning, Neil Walker comes up to the bat. And he blasts off. 6-0 Pittsburgh. They go on to win 7-0. The Cardinals drop to 10 back of the Brewers. Bragging rights can last forever, or at least until two teams play again. In the case of the Chiefs and the Rams, that won't be for at least another year. Unless, dare I say it, the two clash in early February in Indianapolis. I don't think it's going to happen. Bradford, early on, touchdown. Mike Sim Sims Walker, former Jaguars receiver, 7-0 Rams. You get to see that one twice, it was so good. Sims Walker over for his first season in a Rams uniform. Later on, A.J. Feely in the game. Well, this is why A.J. Feely's the backup quarterback. He's intercepted by Quentin Lawrence. And the Chiefs have a little bit of life. Now backup Ricky Stanzi's in, and he's going to throw a 33-yard touchdown to Slate. It's 14-10. Governor's Cup on the line. Now, go ahead and fast forward. 14-10, three left. You just need the field goal, right? Uh-oh. First round pick, Robert Quinn of the Rams blocks the kick. They go on to win it 14 to 10. Penalties, the end of the game, that's kind of stuff that uh, uh, doesn't make you feel real good as the, as the head coach and because those generally um, come right back on me. And we got to do a better job of being a disciplined team. It's pretty simple, actually. The earlier you start a race, the better chance you have to win it. Last week, Carl Edwards started 22nd in Michigan en route to a disappointing 36th place finish. This week, a bit better. Edwards qualified second last night at Bristol, posting a speed of 122.67 miles per hour. Edwards will start only behind Ryan Newman. The Sprint Cup Series race gets going in about an hour. Edwards last won this event in 2008. 
That's your look at sports. Now back to news with Todd and Rico. All right, thanks, Will. We appreciate it.